This week on Maker Update, how to give a fish a hammer, Intel gives up, Raspbian gets an update, Printerbot tries for Infinite Z, a love letter to gaffer tape, and a better way to trim a zip tie. It's Wednesday, June 28th. I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to another Maker Update. I hope you're having a great week. I'm excited because I've got lighting in the studio now that I didn't have before, which will hopefully impart some extra beauty into these videos that was lacking previously. Or maybe you can see me too clearly now and it's awful. But we're gonna give it a shot and I'm excited to give it a shot. I'm also excited that I have a new batch of tools in to review for next month, which is, I have to admit, a nice perk of working for cool tools. Just the tools just keep on coming. Um, There's a lot of news to share this week, but let's get started with an advanced project of the week that is equal parts bizarre and amazing. Artist Neil Mendoza built a fish tank that gives this goldfish the power to aim and hit things outside of the tank with a hammer. He calls it the Fish Hammer Actuation Device, or Fish Hammer for short, and it works by tracking the fish's movement with an overhead camera and then mapping it to a teensy controlled stepper motor on a half circle track. So why give a fish a hammer and have it smash doll furniture. Well, Neil says that since humans have been destroying fish habitats for years, he wanted to give a fish a chance to wreak destruction on a mini human habitat. All I know is that I can't see aquariums now without thinking that they should have one of these. The real trick for this particular build is the custom semicircular aluminum track, which Neil had to design in Autodesk Inventor and cut on the Pier 9 water jet. Had he used straight track and a rectangular tank, he probably could have purchased some off-the-shelf components to make things easier. It wouldn't look as fancy though, but it'd be a hell of a lot easier to pull off. Now, am I going to actually use this project to weaponize a fish tank? Probably not, but could you use this guide to create a motorized platform or camera dolly that tracks people with computer vision? You totally could, and there's a lot of potential there. And now for news. Last week, Hackaday reported that Intel is quietly discontinuing several of their developer boards, including the Galileo, the Jewel, and Edison. The boards will continue to ship until the end of 2017. In the meantime, Intel will continue to support their Curry chip and the Intel-based Arduino 101 board. The cut isn't a huge surprise considering how expensive and relatively unpopular the boards were. But that said, It is a little surprising that Raspberry Pi continues to steamroll ahead without much real competition from more established brands like Intel. I think it's great, it's just unexpected. Speaking of Raspberry Pi, there's an updated version of the official Raspbian OS out now. It includes an offline version of Scratch 2.0, which you can now more easily interface with the Pi's GPIO pins for creating interactive hardware projects. You can also now create scratch animation sprites using the Pi camera module. The new Raspbian also includes a new tool for programming Python called Thonny. Compared to Python's own idle tool, Thonny is supposed to be much easier to use, more user-friendly, and geared for beginners like myself, so I'm excited to check it out. In other news, on YouTube, Brooke Drum from Printerbot showed off a new 3D printing prototype he's calling the Printer Belt. The idea is that it prints to a rolling belt of Kapton film, which can just keep rolling out your print for an infinitely long print or series of prints. It's a neat idea and I've never seen anything like it, but still it's totally experimental right now. Finally, there's a new DIY electronics magazine being launched called Diode or DIYode. It's out of Australia and you can sign up for digital or print editions online. I'm curious to see what it's like. This week for my one minute tool review brought to you by Cool Tools, I'm going to show you guys gaffer tape. I've got two flavors of gaffer tape here. Both of them are available on Amazon Prime and I've got links in the description here that will take you to the tape. And by using those links, you help support these videos and the Cool Tools blog. Gaffer tape is a cloth back tape, similar to duct tape, but more expensive and often harder to find. It gets its name from movie set lighting electricians known as gaffers. These people spend a lot of their day on location taping down cables to prevent them from getting tugged on or tripped on. The next day, equally important, they need to be able to peel away the tape 
without leaving behind a sticky mess on the set or on their cables. The magic thing about gaffer tape is that it comes away clean, so it's almost like painter's tape, but with the strength of duct tape. And if you've ever peeled up old duct tape, you know what a gross mess it leaves behind. What I love about this tape is that you can easily tear it by hand and the cloth backing keeps your tears square. So you can get nice straight tears. You can also get tears lengthwise, which can be useful for making small labels. And that's the other great thing about gaffer tape. The matte cloth backing is easy to write on and it's non-reflective. So if you pick up a bright color like white, yellow, or pink, labels really stand out. Now per yard, this tape is about four times as expensive as duct tape. The 30 yard, two inch wide roll sells for around $17. This three inch roll sells for around 23. And the wider roll is better at taping down bundles of cables, but is also great for tearing three inch vertical strips that are often just enough for what you need. For what it's worth, I ordered the two inch roll first and it came with a 25% coupon from Gaffer Power that I could redeem on Amazon for the three inch roll. So I basically got these for the same price. You too can cultivate your fine taste for gaffer tape by using the link in the video description here. And by doing so, you help support this show and the Cool Tools blog and podcast. And remember, you can see thousands of reader recommended tools just like this at cool-tools.org. One other tip to share with you this week, through Gareth Branwin's tip of the week over on Make, I found a tip from Scott Hahn on how to trim down zip ties without leaving a sharp edge. Chad from Mancrafting has a video showing the technique and instead of just tightening the zip tie and trimming it down, Scott recommends using pliers right where the extra plastic meets the lock and twisting until it shears off. You get a neater cut with no sharp edges. Contest! It's been a while since I've mentioned contests running on Instructables, but there are a bunch right now including Van Life, Invention, Fidget Spinner, Makerspace, Science, and a whole bunch more. So go try and win stuff. Two great Maker Fairs this weekend, including a mini Maker Fair in London and a big Maker Fair in Detroit. If either of those are near you, you should go check it out. And that's it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe and thumbs up and leave a comment. All that stuff is great. And if you're ready to step up to gaffer tape, be sure to use the links in the video description here. Using those help to support my channel and cool tools. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.